My name is Ian Ritchie. I like to think I'm an architect, a little bit of an engineer, a bit of a poet, a writer and an artist. The first project I ever worked on, which was glass, was the Ipswich Glass Building when I worked with Norman Foster. And although it went black, regrettably, it was seminal in the sense of understanding that if I was a Martian or coming from another galaxy and I was to be able to say to you I've got this material that you can't see and it keeps the weather out and you can lick it and you can kiss somebody through it and even water will stay on it all on its own and then it will start running down and then it will disappear very beautiful material. The other aspect of glass, apart from mentioning kissing through glass, but it's also a material that children like to press up against. And that says something quite interesting. Although it's cold and flat generally, it's actually very tactile. It has a haptic quality that people all recognize from childhood. I think as an architect we should always almost live in our buildings for a while uh, to actually fully understand what we've designed. There is a magical building in Leipzig that you only have to open the door and it takes your breath away and that's the glass hall. Partly because it's got a reverberation time of nearly 40 seconds which is lovely and it, in a way the colour flows like the sound in that space. Uh, when we did Leipzig Glass Hall uh, with Volker and Marg, it was a, in a way the end, beginning end of an era where I was known as the glass man. In fact the uh, Leipziger Zeitung actually had a headline, the glass man cometh. <laughs> and in many ways uh, it was a pinnacle. It's a very beautifully made, uh, engineered and maintained building. Uh, and I think from then on I decided glass is not the answer to the, all the questions which seems to be still prevalent for architects and to move into discovering new ways of making buildings, completely new ways, like knitting them. I think the materials of our century so far are basically fibres. At the end of the 20th century, optic fibres basically govern the world and it's the purest material man has made. But more interesting now are the use of fibres for structures and cloths which will eventually end up in buildings and be entirely recyclable. And having worked with a few pieces of fibre, whether it's even metal fibre and carbon fibre and Kevlar, the ability to use that not just to strengthen materials but also to use them to read the stresses in materials. So we will be able to knit properly future architecture. Nature has actually invented most of the materials already on that live and work on this earth and we're discovering through whether it's bioluminescence uh, the behavior of the chameleon skin for camouflage it's actually all out there even leaves have astonishing performance and understanding nature molecularly at the molecular level uh, in its dynamic state will give us a lot more information about the sort of materials we could develop whether we should I don't know, but certainly we will develop some. A toast rack is to put bread in on the table and it's made with a very small piece of plywood with eight holes and some cane which I bent in water and put in the holes. And the next thing I built was a house. <laughs>